welcome to Life Coaching on the Move, your free podcast uh, by me, Dawn Fisk. I'm a life coach and have been for the last 17 years and trainer, both in the corporate world and the private world. And I am thrilled that you have chosen to listen to this today. I just want to say that really. I just want to say a massive thank you because I know how many thousands of podcasts there are out there available today for any one of us to listen to and the fact that you are listening to this one just makes my day it really really um, I'm humbled so thank you very much you may be a returning listener and if you are thank you I love the fact that people are coming back and you may be brand new either way if you enjoy today's podcast please will you either rate and review it or um Uh, write a little comment uh, wherever you found it because that does increase the chances of it slipping up the rankings a bit and therefore somebody else similar being able to find it somebody else similar to you who may well benefit from the content in the same way that you might have today so it would be great to spread the word and share it on forward um, so that others can get what they need right now Um, because I think there is a little bit of um fate here we often find what we're looking for when we need it things come our way when we need them Um, we often don't see them if we're not looking because it's not relevant if it is relevant we spot them and so it tells me that you are the right audience today you are open-minded you are uh, willing to listen willing to learn willing to expand your mind to grow to develop to move forward Um, so you are my right audience that's brilliant but there are many, many more out there similar to you who do want to get out of a situation, handle something, cope with something, improve their mindset, improve their future, improve improve their goals and achievements and their confidence, and they'll benefit too. So it's just a small ask. Anyway, I am not dog walking today. As most of you know, I sometimes do this on a dog walk. I'm not. It's absolutely pouring it down outside. It's grim. I'm in my office. And so hopefully you can hear me a lot clearer than normal. So without further ado, thank you again. And let's crack on with today's topic. Today, I'm calling this uh, podcast episode, Don't Look Down. Um, Now, I don't know whether you've ever done anything really, really challenging, like a big abseil down the edge of a cliff or off the side of a sky high building uh, or something like that. Whether you've done um, some really terrifying black runs and skiing or snowboarding uh, or you've done a parachute jump, something like that. But we can all, if you haven't, um, we can all visualize it, can't we? Um, let's imagine now that you're doing a big tightrope walk or you're about to sort of launch off the side of a cliff doing your first hang gliding experience, something like that. Frequently, we are given the advice, don't look down. Why is that? Why do people say don't look down? Well, um, I guess it's because if you look down and you see the danger, it is going to merely bring that into sharp focus what you're about to do the risks you're about to take the consequences that could um, befall you um, the injuries that you could have etc etc so it's wise isn't it not to look down don't look down at the risks don't look down at the dangers Um, and in a sense that's almost uh, it's it's preservation isn't it it's um, it's keeping you safe it's a good strategy it's a wise strategy Um, Similarly, did you know that they advise when you're driving along and it's dark and you've got your full beam, your full lights on um, and a car comes around the country road, uh, you know, it's it's a narrow road and it comes hurtling around the the, in the other direction with its full beam on. I remember when I was learning to drive or I was on a driving course when I was a sales rep uh, to be uh, to not look at the headlights of the other car even though they're very, very bright and they could be sort of dazzling you, etc. I was taught strictly to not look at their headlights, but instead to keep looking at where I was going, my direction, my side of the road, the the tarmac in front of me. Because there is a huge temptation to, to look at their lights. But our hand and eye coordination go together. So you are more likely to go towards where you're eyes are looking your hands are more likely to steer towards where your eyes are looking so if you look towards the oncoming 
car's headlights, you're more likely to steer inadvertently without even knowing more towards that car. And that's not the plan. The plan is to stay on your side of the road, stay away from that car and avoid danger. So you should not look at that car. Um, similarly, when you're told I uh, have tried to learn to ski late to the game on this one, far too late actually. I wish I'd done it as a youngster because you're not aware of the dangers and far, far more uh, risk-taking and far more fearless. I've seen that with my own children who throw themselves down the mountains fearlessly, whereas I'm poodling at the top, um, holding myself back and cautious, very, very cautious because I'm mindful of the possible dangers <laughs> and there's probably part of me thinking I can't afford to break my leg who would drive the two kids to school who would get them to college how would I do my job etc which is the wrong thing to be thinking I know that as a coach but I also know that when I'm up there and there's an edge to the um, the side uh, there's a drop on one or other sides of me or maybe both sides of me on a ski run I know not to look at that don't look at the edge because I'm much more likely to inadvertently start skiing towards it because the truth is and what I'm trying to say is we need to look at what we want to aim for so with the skiing I need to look at the path that I'm following I need to look at the run that I want to stay on not the edge that I want to fall off or, or want to avoid falling off I want to look at the bit in front of me the wide pathway uh, ski run in front of me with the driving I need to look at the road in front of me where I want to go um, when I used to play netball and used to try shooting, you know, be goal shooter, I wasn't naturally a goal shooter, but if I did ever practice goal shooting or uh, basketball with the kids or something like that, you know that you've got to look at where you're aiming the ring or the goal that you're aiming for because your hand and your eye work together, you're much more likely to do that. And achieve the goal when the kids are playing tennis I'll say to my young one you know when he's trying to learn to serve not that I'm a great tennis player but the theory is definitely there look at the box that you're trying to get the ball into over the net look over there not not in front of you and at the ball here look at where you're aiming for um, but why am I saying this well I'm saying it because so often I work with clients who are focusing on their goals sort of they tell me their goals or we discuss what they're trying to achieve but their conversation and their mindset and all of their attention is on the risks the what ifs the pitfalls um, basically they're on that uh, tightrope and they're looking down they're looking down at where they could fall um, and so what do they get more of as I've said before, I'm certain I've said this, whatever you focus on, you get more of. You focus on the dangers and the what ifs and the risks. And I hear this a lot. The, uh, the language that people use reveal to me what they're thinking. And so they'll say, yeah, but uh, it's tempting or it, uh, yeah, but what if I fall? What if I fail? What if it doesn't work? What if I don't have the money? What if I don't have the time, etc. Um, I was working with somebody yesterday and he has previously successfully been a cyclist, successfully lost lots of weight, successfully achieved real health and wellness and um, well-being. But he's kind of got off the wagon for a while. Uh, he's, for whatever reason, there are reasons, he stopped cycling for a while. He's taken his eye off the ball, as it were. He's gained weight. He's lost fitness. He's lost motivation. He's lost belief. But he wants to get back onto it. And we've been working on this for a while now. He wants to get back to cycling. He wants to lose some weight. He wants to get his fitness back and his health back and his confidence back. Because, of course, when we lose all of the things we've been benefiting from and focusing on and working towards, when we lose all of that for whatever reason, we often lose some confidence and a little bit of self-belief. Um, and when I was chatting yesterday with him, it was the, the conversation focused a lot on why he can't do it. Why? Because, you know, it's so easy when his wife buys biscuits or cakes or treats, he opens the cupboard, they're there. And before he knows it, he's eaten half a packet of biscuits. And the weather's bad now. And so 
it's difficult to get out on the bike and join his old club and get back out there. Um, and, you know, it's getting dark in the evenings and you come home from work and it's getting dark and the temptation is just to sit on the sofa and watch TV and chill rather than get your gear on and go out there or go on a machine at your home, you know, do some home cycling or some, you know, home fitness in your lounge in front of the, the YouTube, whatever it is. Um, we often have reasons, don't we? But they are excuses. They are genuine excuses. Um, if we can't resist the temptation of the biscuits in the cupboard, we need for there to be no biscuits in the cupboard. If um, we're using the weather as an excuse, really, is that genuine? Um, are we hanging on to that? Um, because in reality, we've lost the confidence, we've lost the motivation, we've lost the belief. Um, and what we do, we start looking down. We start looking at over that edge of that cliff, look at the danger, look at the height, look at the rocks beneath us and think, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. So in a way, uh, we need to avoid looking down. We need to avoid looking at the risks, the what ifs, the possible things that could possibly go wrong or could possibly stop us. Um, because, you know, even with this client, when I said, what about Saturday? No matter what the weather, what about Saturday? Commit now to going out to a cycle ride. Um, and maybe the, the answer could be, oh, yeah, but we might have the grandchildren. Or yes, but uh, my wife might want me to do X, Y, and Z chores in the house. You're already preempting obstacles. You're already preempting and allowing and giving your subconscious permission for those to be excuses. Because the truth is that um, we can make what we want happen happen if we really, really are committed. I think I talked about this in a previous episode where um, a, uh, a woman, on a podcast that I was listening to, she broke the spine record. Uh, the spine is the Pennine Way. Uh, I think it's about 300 miles or 300 kilometers. I can't remember. But she broke the record. Not only did she beat the second place, a man, by about eight hours, she did it uh, at a phenomenal rate through uh, over a few days, through the night, in the dark, by herself, in the winter, in January, on the Pennine Way. But she was also having to stop and express milk because she's got an 11 month old that was still having night feeds. So she was training for this while she was breastfeeding a younger baby through the winter by herself in the rain, in the cold, in the dark, at five in the morning, after feeding through the night, after recovering post birth. And she is also a vet, so she is also working. So she committed to that plan and she didn't look down. She didn't look at the downsides, the what ifs. She committed to a plan and made it happen. She didn't give in to those excuses. Her commitment to that plan was so motivating for her, so um, inspirational for her that that's all she focused on. She didn't give excuses. It's raining outside. It's 5 a.m. It's cold. I've been up all night. I'm tired. I've done a day's work. I'm, you know, I'm exhausted. She didn't allow any of those excuses to come in. Now, I know her achievement is quite, quite awesome and quite off the scale. I'm not expecting or suggesting that at all. But on these everyday things that we want to do, we say we want to do them, we then create excuses. We put up our own obstacles. We look down into that depth, into the, uh, at that drop, at that danger, at those possible risks and consequences. Instead of looking up uh, at where you're going, up into the beautiful scenery of where you're about to jump and think about the great free fall that you're about to have or the skiing down that beautiful white powdery snow or, um, you, you know, instead of looking at what we want to achieve and how good we're going to feel and how great it's going to be doing it, the adrenaline, the drive, the the excitement, the sense of achievement or whatever, or for this client, the sense of health again and uh, wellness and being able to run up the stairs without being out of breath and sleep better and feel better in his clothes and feel better just in himself, in his own skin. 
and feel great socially again with these old mates at the cycling club and enjoying the fresh air and enjoying the sense of achievement and seeing um, his successes as he gets faster, as he gets more and more fitter, as he is able to keep up with the younger guys in the club. All of the benefits that it brings him. Instead, he's looking at the obstacles. He's looking at the wrong things. Um, so we need to visualize how we want something to go. We need to look at where we're going, look at the road in front of us, not the oncoming headlights. Look at the goal in front of us that we're trying to get that netball ball into or basketball into or whatever. Um, so that our hand or foot with football, we've got to look at where we want the goal to uh, my boys play hockey. They have to look at the top corner where they want that ball to go when they're about to whack the ball and score a goal. You've got to look at where you're headed and expand that. Now, um, I thought I might do a little bit of a visualisation, actually, because this is a lovely, lovely um, little thing. I'm not suggesting that you do this now, particularly if you're driving. I don't know where you are. You might be on a tube uh, or a train, um, a bus listening to this, or you might be relaxed at home listening to it in the bath or while you're cooking, whatever it is. But if you are driving, don't do this. Um, but if you fancy doing this, I had this done to me, as it were, years and years ago in a workshop way, I mean, this must be 20, 25 years ago. And I found it really, really helpful. Um, so much so that I still remember it to this day, 25 years on. Um, so I thought I would share it with you. So, um, come back to it if you are driving, um, but this is how to do it. Either do it with me now or come back and do it by yourself later. Um, but what I want you to do is to get very, very comfortable in your chair. Um, and as always, breathing is so key, do you know, uh, generally to relaxing and de-stressing and everything. So uh, uh, this is a great chance for me to, to get you to think about your breathing at any point when you're stressful, but particularly now. So when you're comfy with your feet flat on the floor and your eyes are closed, um, I want you to think about your breathing. I want you to really focus on breathing in for four, a nice deep breath uh, through your nose for four, hold for four, and then release out of your mouth for four. And I want you to do that a couple of times. And I'll carry on chatting while you're doing it. Uh, but as a tip, that can help you at night if you're not able to sleep. Just lay flat on your back and relax and do those that square breathing a few times flat on your back. And often you'll just drift off, partly because you're counting and you're not now thinking about your worries and you're distracting your brain. But also it's calming you down and slowing your heart rate down and your breathing down. So whilst you're sat there doing this breathing, I want you to continue to do it, but I want you to try and extend the out breath so that maybe it begins to take a five out for five or six. Uh, so that you really, really begin to slow that down. And also at the same time, I want you to relax all your muscles or we'll tense them perhaps, and then relax them. Maybe work from top down, start relaxing all your face muscles, your forehead, your cheeks, your jaw. Sometimes when we're stressed, we're very tense around the jaw. Our neck and shoulders, if we've got tension, we often hold it there. So relax out your shoulders. Um, work down your arms. As you're doing this breathing, work down the torso and the abdomen, all your diaphragm muscles, all your stomach muscles, core, all the way down your thighs, your legs, everything. Just work down your, your muscle groups, tensing them a little bit, and then relaxing them all. Just let all your tension go. And while you're doing that, and while you're slowing your breathing down, and you're relaxing all your muscles, I want you to imagine you're walking along a street and you see a door. And this door can be however you picture it, whatever color it is. See the door in front of you, um, visualize it, what color, what uh, design, the door handle, the design of the handle, etc. And I want you to open that door. And as you peer inside, you see a, a downward staircase going down, down, down into the basement, sort of lower level. And as you venture down those physically yourself, take a step down, 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 slow your breathing down more and relax more as you go down 
into this lower level. And uh, then turn, there's another door there. See that door, visualize that door, open the door and walk through. And as you walk through, you notice actually that it's an empty cinema. Uh, the backlights are on on the sort of screen. The curtains are drawn on the screen, but you can see the backlights. Dim lighting is in the cinema um, area, the seated area, but there's no one in there. It's very quiet, very peaceful, completely empty. And walk into the cinema and find yourself a seat that you feel drawn to. And get yourself nice and comfy in that cinema auditorium and get into your seat. And as you look at the screen, uh, you notice that the curtains are parting slowly parting and the lights are coming on and there is a film beginning to show and you watch with interest a film appear on the screen and I want you to watch the film and you notice actually that it's a film of you it is you in the future your life in the future but it's a film or a movie of you leading the life that you want to lead in a year or two or some point in the future. It's your future life, the way you want it, the way you'd love to design it, the way if you could wave a magic wand, it would be. Um, and I want you to just observe it. You know, where are you? Who are you with? What are you doing? What are you wearing? Are you saying anything? Is there any sound? Are there other people with you? Who are they? Uh, what is the scenario? What is the setting? But what it is, is a movie of the perfect you having the perfect time or leading the life that you would love to design. Now, I don't know where that is. It might be with family and friends. It might be in a particular place. It might be a particular job or a business or an opportunity. It may be traveling it may it's it's your movie you can decide and design that movie but it's in the future and it's it's a lovely lovely movie you're really enjoying it um, I want you to just soak it up um, as you quietly just sit there in the auditorium watching it I'm going to just go quiet for a few seconds I just want you to be watching that movie, just watching your movie. And while you do that, I want you to notice the colors and I want you to turn them up so that they're even brighter, and more vivid and clearer and more colorful. A little bit like if you had a remote control for a TV to adjust the color. And similar to that remote control, I want you to adjust the clarity of the movie. Make it really clear. And if there's sound or conversation or bird song or the waves or anything, any noise and sound in the movie, I want you with that remote control to turn the volume up, make it even louder. And as you look at the screen in front of you, I want you to make that screen even bigger. It might be one of those ginormous multiplex cinemas that you get in huge cities. Really, really big screen in front of you. Huge image of you leading the perfect life, um, just the way you want it, feeling the way you're feeling. And notice now in the movie, what are you feeling? What are you feeling? Are you feeling happy? Are you feeling confident? Are you feeling calm and relaxed and, um, you know, um, proud? What are you feeling? What are all the emotions in that movie that that actor or that character is feeling? And I want you to literally, like a remote control, intensify that feeling and let it wash all over you as you sit in the auditorium watching it. I want you to actually feel that. So every sense as you watch your movie it is enhanced. Make it louder, make it clearer, make it more colourful, make it larger, make it feel stronger. And now as you watch that and as you thoroughly enjoy every minute of that movie, I want you in the auditorium to stand up 
and walk towards, down the aisle, towards the screen. And as the screen gets closer and the images get larger and larger, I want you to actually climb up, up onto the, the screen, the ledge, on the stage, and get into the movie. I want you now to be that person. I want you to actually feel it. You now are acting in that movie. Um, so you're connecting to it totally. So similar to if you were watching a movie of you on a um, roller coaster, you're watching you on a roller coaster. Now I want you to be sat in the roller coaster. So where you were watching the movie, I want you to be in the movie. And now I'll leave you for a few seconds to thoroughly enjoy that feeling and hear everything and feel everything and see everything. And when you feel ready and you, you're able and, and willing to come out of that movie, step down from the stage and go towards that doorway where you entered the auditorium. And as you climb up those stairs to that uh, first door, I want your breathing to, to uh, speed up a little bit. I want you to wiggle your fingers and your toes and start moving your limbs a little bit. And as you climb up and up out of the stairs, I want you to come back up and up, back into the room that you're sat in. As you walk through that first door into the street, you coming back into the room that you're in now, back into everyday awareness and feel nicely awake, nicely alert, open your eyes up and be present to this podcast. Now, um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was useful. Um, most people find that easy and enjoyable and helpful. A few people don't because they may, it just may not be their thing. And that's okay. Don't, do not beat yourself up at all if that is the case. But I know that the majority listening will have been able to go with that, will have found some benefit to the relaxation and the slowing of the breathing. If nothing else, that's a good thing to just take a few minutes to relax and check on your breathing and relax your muscles. So if nothing else, it's done that for you and revitalized you a little bit in that way. If you were able to go with me on the visualization and you could see yourself living that life, you now know that it is a possibility. You've now sown a thought. When I did that years and years ago, um, I don't know why it wasn't in my plan at all in any shape or form, but I saw myself in a particular, I was actually outside of a particular house that I didn't know. Uh, I could see it completely and I was with, um, in, in my visualization I was with a husband, my husband, um, and I had two children and I was leaving for work, they were happy, they were playing, I was saying bye bye, everybody was happy, it was a lovely garden, I was leaving, going to work, I felt great, I felt happy with everything, I felt settled, um, a, a sense of just a, a kind of accomplishment, settlement, happiness, love around me, love for the children, my husband. It, just, it was just a lovely, lovely movie. I just loved the movie and I still remember it to this day, 25 odd years ago. And I was young and I was in the corporate world and I didn't have marriage in mind. I didn't have children in mind or anything like that at the time. I was leading a great single life with a nice income, you know, out and about, doing what I wanted, independent. It was so far removed from what I was working towards at that time. And yet years later, <laughs> um, I one day was leaving for work and had my two children and I re there was a moment where it hit me where I realised, oh my God, that is what I saw in the movie years ago. And I realised that pretty much, without any exception, even the, the house and the garden, it was so similar to that movie I'd run in my head. 
and yet I had not been aware of it, I had not worked towards it, I hadn't really thought about it or remembered it, but there was a particular day where I was off going for work somewhere, I can't remember where, it was a freelance client, I think, I was just leaving and I remember thinking, God, it was like a sense of deja vu. Oh my word, I've, I've been here, I've had this moment before and then I realised why. So, so many things that I have been reading, research, papers, articles, interviews and so on, where people constantly talk about the power of visualisation. The woman with the spine achievement that she had used visualisation to keep her going, visualising herself achieving her goal. Um, this is what I'm trying to say to you. We need to, instead of looking down at the dangers, the risks, the what ifs, the oh yeah buts, the what if this goes wrong or I mess up or it doesn't work or I'm rubbish or I can't do it or it doesn't happen or I don't have the time or etc. Instead of that, we need to focus on how it's going to happen, how we're going to solve it, how we're going to make it work, uh, what it looks like, what it will feel like, what it will sound like. You need to keep running that movie in your head. Sportsmen do this all the time. Every single podcast I listen to with sportsmen on, and I have said this before on Don't Tell Me The Score podcast, it's sports people all the time, but they use it as a metaphor for life, so you don't have to be sporty to listen to it at all. It is very life-affirming and very appropriate for everybody, no matter what their sport interests or not. Uh, you will get loads out of it. The common theme throughout is affirmations and visualisation of how powerful those two things are. The sense of belief, the sense of looking at how you want it to be. Looking up, looking at where you're going instead of uh, what's coming at you in the headlights or other distractions, other obstacles, other hurdles and other reasons why not. Don't focus on those. Focus on what you want. And we are so good, us humans, at running a movie in our head of how doom and gloom it's going to be or a disaster. We catastrophize in our head. What if this happens? What if I stand up there and do this presentation or this PowerPoint or this speech? Or um, I go for that interview and it's a disaster. Or I take my driving test and I mess it up. Or what if this? Or what if I ask them out and they say no? Or it's always the what ifs. And we run the movie of I'll be mortified and embarrassed and I won't know what to say and it'll be really awkward. Or I'll be on stage and I'll, um, you know, I won't know how to get off stage and I'll be all red and embarrassed and I'll want to cry, whatever. We mustn't do that. Because that's much more likely to happen if we do do that, because we get what we focus on. Um, we mustn't focus on the fact that, my, yeah, but my wife might buy some biscuits and then before I know it, I've eaten half a biscuit, half a packet. Well, yeah, focus on that. And that is what will happen. Focus on what you want instead. Um, how are you going to replace that behavior with what behavior? What will you do instead of eat the biscuits if they're there? Um, where can you redirect your energy and that same effort elsewhere? Um, so the key takeaway from today is play with that movie. If you couldn't do it where you are now, um, then do it some other time when you're having a nice relaxation in the bath or when you're um, going to sleep at night or if you're just having a five minute rest somewhere and a little meditation, then try that. I genuinely heartfelt hope that it was of use to you because um, it genuinely was of use to me. I knew nothing about these things. I wasn't a coach at the time. Uh, I wasn't into any of this at the time. I was completely open-minded, gave it a go and found it profound, the result that it had. And even more so years later when I realised, oh my God, <laughs> That was that movie I ran in my head. It's happened. It's come true. Um, so go with it. Play with it. Uh, and use it and adapt it for anything you're about to do. So if you're about to do something that's a little bit scary. Uh, I don't know. You're going to be a bridesmaid this weekend. Or um, you're going for a big job interview. Or a half day assessment. Or anything. Anything new that's slightly scary. Then run a movie in your head. Pretend to be in that cinema. Pretend to be watching yourself. Do it the way you want to do it. Uh, get into the screen, feel it, uh, live it, 
um, and enjoy it um, rather than run that doom and gloom movie that we so often automatically run in our heads of what could go wrong I could be late what if I'm late what if this what if they don't like me what if I speak up and they think I'm stupid we have to banish those they are doing nothing for us whatsoever nothing at all and we wouldn't say those things to our friends We wouldn't sow all of those doubts in our friends' minds. We'd encourage and support them. That is what we have to do for ourselves. So play with the visualization. If that scenario didn't work for you, change the scenario. But as I said, with the roller coaster, instead of imagining yourself, seeing yourself on a roller coaster, watching a film of you on a roller coaster, actually make yourself connect with it and be in the roller coaster. Imagine yourself sitting in there, feel the metal, um, bar in front of you holding it you're cold it's cold under your hands uh, feel the seat underneath you feel the cold air on your face and the tears streaming as you, the your tears stream across your face in the wind at the height the stomach goes over the screaming hear the screaming hear yourself scream out etc so really really connect I'm not saying do the roller coaster thing. I'm saying with whatever you're trying to visualize yourself doing, achieving, having, gaining, becoming, whatever it is, then actually get into it and feel it. So drop me a line and share your successes. Share your thoughts with me. I love, love, love hearing from you. And uh, if you want me to, I could always try and read some of them out in future podcasts if you want to share them. In the meantime, feel free to visit the website www.milestone-coaching.co.uk where you can contact me if you want to. There's plenty of contact me boxes that you can click on. If you ever want some one-to-one coaching on a particular subject and it can be a subject of your choice, an issue or an area that you're working on and you want that proper challenge, that proper um, coaching support tailored to you and your subject to move you up a, la- a level um, very, very quickly, then do not think that geography is an issue. It isn't because I do phone, Skype, FaceTime coaching at different times of the day, um, during the day, some evenings, some weekends. So uh, time differences and country differences are not a problem. Drop me an email. I'm here when and if you need me or if a friend needs me. If not, I'm here next week on the next podcast and I hope you will come back and join me and play with the visualisation and just enjoy it. Let your imagination run riot and enjoy the moment. Take care. Have a really good, strong, confident week.